two more NBA basketball games tonight. The, the play in variety to set the, uh, the the playoff bracket, the official NBA playoff bracket. We will know it at the end of tonight. We figured out the NHL playoff bracket last night after the Kings and uh, Knights did some flip flopping over and over again there. But most importantly, we got the Mariners at Coors today. I mean, maybe Julio's finally going to hit a home run, save the season, and happy Patrick Wisdom returning, batting second day. I know that's what everyone's here to talk about, eh, Des? I don't, I don't know anything outside of the main slate, so that's uh, that, that's great news, though. I had no idea that that he was that he was back. Yeah, it's good, man. Outfield too. He's playing the outfield. So is he? A lefty killer himself. Ooh, yeah. get him a little yellow positional designation for our daily contest. That'd be fun. Here's hoping, man. Here's hoping. Make uh make stacking those uh stacking him and Christopher Morrell so fun. Oh baby. Can't wait. Let them face um, uh some lefty in cores, please. Yeah, one time. Uh here's the GMs, GMs, the happy Fridays. What's going on? All our friends. In the chat, hey, yeah, it's the first time I've seen Alex in a, in a minute since he had his big bink the other night, so congrats there. Uh, speaking of binks, Nez, are you going to tell the people? I'm out here celebrating third-place finishes. I'm glossing around the streets, yo, patting myself on the back, third place. What'd you do yesterday, my friend? Yeah, I mean, just a little second place. Just just a second place in the frozen rope. Uh, I, for whatever reason, I have a lot of good fortune in these, like, super like limited top heavy structures i don't know i mean it's pro- i don't know if it's just like variance in in there or what i'm not going to question it we're just going to keep playing that dude um, the skill set yeah get, get get good get good you've, you've, per- issue. you've perfectly tethered and designed your own play style to be good in these contests tell the people man i had no idea i had no idea this is what i've been waiting for all along thank you thank you new me for recognizing oh, my skills. Oh, that's good. Um, before we start, we'll start NBA. Hopefully, I mean, it's only two games late. Um, uh-huh. A lot of moving pieces with the injuries and stuff, though. No Jimmy Buckets tonight. No Zion Williamson tonight. Uh, where are those minutes going to go? Not entirely sure. Maybe a flippening of Nance and Jovell back because the narrative is Jovell cooks Sabonis. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I would love to know your thoughts on that one. And, and then we'll dive into MLB. We got the the holdout bull. I'm calling it the holdout bull. Blake Snell versus Jordan Montgomery tonight. The holdout bull. No, the hold out holding bull. out. <laughs> the, 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 the guys who nobody wanted to sign bull. Um, but some interesting weather on that slate, man. Uh, Atlanta looks better than Coors today. IMO. Yeah, I mean, you can still draft cores today Yeah, just because I think it's very binary. If they play, they will play. And if it's – and if they don't, then I think we find out pretty early and you can okay. then, you know, swap to, you know, a, a plethora of options because there's 10 games today. 10 so, games. Yeah. you know, I, I think it's okay to, to draft. And uh, it's probably advantageous to at this point because – all the prices are very, very suppressed right now, and we're dealing with two not good pitchers. Uh, so if they do play, seems like it's going to matter. It's the highest run total on the slate, and only Julio and Nolan Jones go every time. Right. Yeah, good shouts there. I mean, I'm not ready to call Emerson Hancock not a good pitcher, bud, but I will I, I will let you have it. I'll let you have it for so, today and today only. What, what's the <laughs> ceiling? Like right-handed Marco Gonzalez? Oh my dude, come on. You can't be throwing shade at Marco. He's on your squad now, dude. I know, but he's rip. <laughs> oh man, I like this. We'll call it the Scott Boris Bull. The Boris Bull. Blame Boris here. The two million dollar pitcher duel. I love this too. Yes, evergreen bindles. Bring back the Vancouver Grizzlies. Basketball in Vancouver was something. They wouldn't let Jaw yep. over the border, dude. <laughs> No, sir. Entirely fair. Entirely fair. Um, all right, Nezzy. Uh oh, the one last thing I told you not to let me forget, blah blah blah. I had an engineering note from our guy Wes at the start of the show. Um, because we had talked about the draft games, experienced some some lag and stuff. That was what a better part of a month ago, kind of thing. 
Yeah, it's been pretty good over the last like three weeks. Yeah, so it's I, I totally agree with you. Lockstep there. It's been really good over the last three weeks. Uh, he just said that they're adding some additional monitoring and uh, instrumentation to the app over the next few weeks. So hopefully they can really nail down what's going on uh, and they've been monitoring more heavily. But they've rolled out a number of changes this week that have greatly improved app performance. Um, yeah, so they're not sure if these uh, benefits... They've greatly improved the pickums. And then they're not sure the direct benefit they've had on the draft games just yet. So they're looking for user feedback. That's all. So constant, constantly improving. Uh, wheels are in motion here. Uh, so I just wanted people to know that any lag that we experienced in the past looks like we're stepping in the right direction. And they would love any feedback if you do experience anything, you know, henceforth. Shout out to shout out to Wes. Shout out to the team. I mean, they, they were on it. You know, they weren't they weren't just like letting this happen and say oh well like you know it, the games will still play they actually are are, are making changes and in, in, in resolving these issues that's good to see good to see yeah. like to see the the real urgency uh there is uh is awesome so hats off to west and the team man they uh you know we we both had conversations with him you know trying to like help with with this issue and uh they've been great so uh yeah we'd love to see it absolutely dude couldn't have said it better myself um, let's jump on in to the NBA streets. How many drafts have you done, my guy? Um, are you, uh, are you heavy so far? Yeah. Fast. I'm, uh, I've got one more crossover left. I've done okay. my pick and roll and I had a couple canceled fast break Fridays and I'm sitting at 88 right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're, you're ahead of me. I've only done like 20 thus far but hey evergreen that Nez is ahead of me in the volume category because he wakes up four hours earlier than me <laughs> um Nez, we got an official nba injury report we're gonna get another one in a few minutes here but this one from the last hour the 12 30 p.m eastern and we got the surprising probable tag from alex caruso on the oh shoot it opened up in another thing uh there we go the surprising probable tag from Alex Caruso. Uh, I call it surprising because I watched the majority of that game the other night and I thought he was legit hurt, man. It looked bad. Like he was icing his ankle on the bench, all this sort of thing. We got a probable tag on the site still listed as questionable here, but there is a little drop down news dug nugget that says he's anticipating playing. Um, are you treating Caruso, Io DeSumo, Andre Drummond as if they are playing basketball this evening? I mean, I like how you threw Andre Drummond in there. Uh, <laughs> I got to get my guy in there, dude. Just slough it under the radar. Yeah, yeah. What are we doing with Andre Drummond tonight? Uh, not <laughs> can they run pool. double big? Can they run <laughs> double big tonight? <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna wait for it. I was gonna wait for it. Uh, yeah, we are definitely uh, drafting Caruso to the tune of twenty nine percent in the Ooh, portfolio. Okay. So in reality, that's like just slightly above average because twenty five percent is the average today given it's four person drafts, but uh, yeah, very much uh, drafting Alex Caruso today. I think, you know, it, it sounds like he's going to play and, you know, it's, they say he expects to play. And I mean, let's be real. If Alex Caruso is playing and <laughs> he doesn't get hit, hit sticked by Andre Drummond again, like he's going to play close to 40 minutes. So, yeah, I mean, he's, he's under drafted right now. Yeah, I like that shout. Um, were you packing your bags in the sixth round? Yeah, I've got I've got a good bit of him in, in the in like the fifth and sixth. I had him like kind of up already just because I was like anticipating some some news, just like taking a bit of a, a gamble at the beginning. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, we've got we've got like we've got a lot in the sixth. So if I'm coming into the contest right now, having not drafted you know, a ton previously like this, should I just be implementing a soft fade on Alex Caruso? I mean, I wouldn't personally. Okay. I still think that you can take him. Um, okay. I mean, if he's the guy you need, he's the guy you need. And you, you, you're talking about like a 2v2 of like Caruso and Keon Ellis versus like Caruso and Hayward Highsmith. Um, right. obviously I'm taking key on Ellis there, but it's, uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of ambiguity in, in the sixth. 
So mm-hmm. I wouldn't just treat it as like Caruso is, you know, this, this, this fade, this fade piece in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Um, shout out to our guy. We'll be here. We'll be thanks getting in here. He said, boomer shit finally figured out how to sub much appreciate that. Um, if you guys are so kind for one BR a month, you can join up, get access to those behind the paywall ones. Uh, yesterday's was a little evergreen. It still holds true today. If you want to go check that one out because we did dance and Zamboni. So there's a little bit of stuff there. If you guys are into that, um, I am kind of in lockstep with AMAC here is my mindset is find the heat player that plays the most minutes between, Simple. you know, just, yeah, find, just, right? just know who it is. Just, just know who it is. <laughs> but between as the aforementioned high Smith there, you said um, yeah. between DeLon Wright, Duncan Robinson, um, you know, Jaime Hawkins goes considerably higher in like the third or fourth round, but uh, Kevin Love available in the last round there. Uh, fake Nikolai Jokic, a.k.a. Nikolai Jovich, um, is there. So I think I maybe even still butchered both those names. <laughs> it's just Jovic. It's just Jovic. Yo- Jovic. <laughs> just Captain. Just, just Captain. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm fully in lockstep there. That I do think kind of nailing this Miami rotation and how we think Miami is going to play, um, even though it's probably the less enticing of the two basketball game environments. Uh, I think that's where the, that's where the kind of like biggest ceiling minutes could come from this evening. Do you agree, Ness? It could be a nightmare. I mean, okay. this could be a deep rotation. All, like, I'm like, there's not a single heat player. <laughs> truthfully, <laughs> like even including the DNP Duncan Robinson, um, mm-hmm. that like was bizarre. Dude, right? What the hell Bizarre. was that, man? I had yeah. I had him in the PNR and like, and, and obviously like the game dragged out, so I couldn't even get a swap. Just so weird, uh, man. You can, I mean, the the, the fewest minutes played was by Jov, Jov, uh, Jovic in that game against the Sixers with 14 minutes. After that, it's Kevin Love, um, and ETR. You know, for what it's worth, likes Jovic. They, they, they he's their pick for you know, heat role player to matter tonight. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Which like, I mean, I don't know. I if, he starts, if, if he starts, he's never guaranteed a second rotation. We've learned this over the course of the year with the heat, but if he starts and plays well and he earns that second rotation, finds his way to the closing lineup, you're starting slightly ahead of the curve versus everybody else's role player because he is starting, right? Like that is the bull case for him. Is it not? Right. I think so. Um, yeah. It's just like, I don't know what the, like, uh, maybe this is a result of like adjustments, but the rotations are just like kind of, kind of strange. Just looking at popcorn machine for, for the heat. Um, you know, like, like it could be matchup based for what yep. they've done, but um, yeah. All I know is that I love Jaime Hawkes and uh, yeah, that's, well, that's we're- a big stand for me. Yeah, we're high my slappies, so that this is nothing new here. Um, but there are some definitive tier breaks. I've pulled up ADP here. There are some definitive tier breaks before we even get to the sixth round, in my estimation here. And there's a lot of like, you know, interesting wrinkles to to work through because people are doing a lot of different things outside of Sabonis at one. You know, it's it's Sabonis at one, and then the field, depending on the player that you're in the room with, they're doing very different things. I have seen Hero fall all the way back to the eight spot. I have seen uh, Demar go as early as two. I have seen uh, Fox fall to four one time. I think there's a ton of ambiguity even before we get to the sixth there, Nez. So um, these are my rankings that I entered my most recent set of lineups with there. Um, let's just start from the top and, uh, you walk me through who you kind of like and where you've been going with like that big, that big four, I guess Sabonis is one for everybody. And then we go from there. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's my one one just based off like ADP, you know, like that's, that's where he's going. That's where I have him. I'm at 27%. So, you know, I'm not way over the field based on RNG or people doing something different. So that's where I'm going to take him. Uh, but it does like kind of present 
an interesting conundrum, I guess. Like, you know, let me like, like if I just quickly look at my, you know, I've done I've done 88 drafts, like I said. So let's see. I've done, I have 23 Sabonis teams. Um, okay. I'm looking at three right off the top that all have Ingram on them. Um, okay. Like there's five now, six, seven, eight, nine, a nine, ten. Like uh, all of my Sabonis teams have Bar- Brandon Ingram. It doesn't feel good to not take Ingram at that two three right. turn, in my opinion. Like, are we gonna like like what kind of minutes limit is Brandon Ingram gonna get in a do or die game without Zion Williamson? Yeah, I know, and that's that's kind of like the driving force of the slate because if you if you told me he was ramped up and he was doing his full thing, where would we rank Brandon Ingram? It would probably be right ahead of Tyler Hero, would it not be? Yeah, they probably be neck and neck because like Hero obviously is in a really really good spot. Just it, just yeah. in, in in a vacuum, like for the team, obviously not against like the Bulls. That's not awesome. We're not jumping up and down, but yeah, it, it would be right there. Yeah. Now my my bro science and film watching and guy who watched the game the other night brain is telling me he does not look good. He he looks injured still. He looks like he's playing through something. And Trey Murphy looks like he's going to have to pull up, you know, his big boy pants and eat some of the, do some of the heavy lifting here is kind of what I've seen from watching the last two games against the Lakers. That being said, if this becomes a 38 minute game for Brandon Ingram and it's a tightly contested ball game, he is going to run away with this slate as the best third round pick. Yeah, he might, um, he might need a little bit of help. I don't know if he's like how hurt he is, you know, maybe just like pop a perk and go out there and play like 40 <laughs> minutes uh, and just, just absolutely fall out. That was spoken by like a man who's never popped a perk because I don't think he pop a, pop a perk before a basketball game. Dude. If you're hurt, those ones, those ones make you sleepy. I think <laughs> if you're hurt, man, you, you take, I mean, you, you throw a little upper in there too. <laughs> All right. Okay. I like it. Um, All right, dude. So uh, before we get to that Ingram tier, uh, was it Fox and then Bam, then DeRozan for you next as as ADP is showing here? Or were you mixing and matching some of this front end? Uh, Fox too for me. Um, And then Bam. Okay. Yeah, so kind of lockstep with ADP here. And then do you like Hero more than DeRozan? Do you like DeRozan? Vooch, what do you like? I'm I got the Rosen over Hero, but I think um I think Hero man is uh <laughs> I, I think I like him more than the field. Uh I wow. will uh, okay. I, I will say that. I'm at 35% hero. Um Okay. I mean th- th- everything is just opening up for him to have a, a monster game. Uh mm-hmm. you know, the only thing that can limit him is just you know not hitting his shots really. But like he's gonna be asked to do a lot. He's not going to leave the floor. Um, yeah, dude, I don't, it, it's hard for me to, 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 to not have him uh, five here. Like I, okay. And, and I can tell that I'm getting lobbies. Cause I did mostly like auto drafts for these, for the $5. And, um, you know, clearly there's people passing up on him there and taking, you know, Vooch or, or CJ and or Kobe because Kobe had the game of his goddamn life. <laughs> I have co I, I was over the field on Kobe White all season. All season. And then I'm like, yep. oh, it's playoff time. Now everybody gets the Kobe White minutes. Like your time's up, buddy. Like now everybody <laughs> gets what you get. And then he's like, actually, I'm gonna literally have the game of my life. So, you know, maybe, maybe that's creeping into the subconscious of folks. I, I'm tr- I'm going to trust the process here, man. Tyler Hero is yeah. going to play every minute, and he's going to have every opportunity to score a bucket on the offensive end for for Miami. So he's yeah. he's definitely one of my larger stands. He's um he, he's he's like my t- he's uh, sorry just one, one two three seventh seventh most drafted player right now. Okay, sounds good to me. Yeah, which is hard to get over the field at someone in the fourth or somewhere in, at like the fourth and fifth ish pick there because you know, everybody's kind of balancing those ones. It's easy to get over the field with some of the later guys. Um, Yeah. I mean, he put up 35 fantasy points last time out. 
Um, and he played poorly. I mean, he, uh, I, I liked what I saw. I liked that he wasn't scared to just keep jacking up shots and whatnot, but he went nine for 27 or something. And he was four for his first 20 from the field. We were looking through it, uh, on yesterday's paywall one a little bit there. If the shot falls, I mean, there's no reason to think the ceiling can't be there. It's just, we need a couple stocks to drag us along here. And he's just not a guy that does that sort of thing. So, I mean, can we get a 35, five and nine game from him? Absolutely. Is that going to break the slate? Uh, it, it, it'll help. It'll help. It might yeah, not break it, be but close. I think it makes him a good, I think it makes him a good pick. Yeah. Yeah. There, that, that's the perfect way of articulating it. Like who has a higher ceiling? CJ, if Ingram is limited, or Hero knowing his role right now. So I got a hot take, and I think you know, I think it's if if C, if, if if Ingram's limited, yeah, like you know, and he's and he's not healthy, and he's not there again. The Kings win by twenty. Like it just won't be a game. Right. Like okay. The, yeah. The, yeah. King, the Kings, like these, these are two teams trending in different directions, and the Pelicans for one reason compared to the Kings for another, both these teams are dealing with injuries and the Kings have like, in my, you know, based on my eyes, like the Kings are playing really good basketball. Like <laughs> they're kind of coming on. Like, it's a shame they're not healthy because they are really coming on right now. Maybe um, that's low key helping them a little bit. Like they've been way better defensively and like, they've been a little bit slower. Not that the Kings play much slower uh, without Monk and Herder. And maybe that's a good thing right now. I don't know. Uh, it's tough to say, dude, but like yeah. Keon Ellis, you know, balling, uh, Keegan Murray, obviously balling. And I mean, if the, if the toughest defensive assignment for the Pelicans is, you know, CJ and yeah. then yeah, it, it, it's, it's over. It, 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 the Kings are just going to crush and, and CJ's won't have a ceiling because it's going to be a blowout. Right. Yeah. Fair enough, dude. Um, I'm looking back here just for a second on the other screen. Uh, of some of the opponents they've played in in recent memory like obviously they beat the warriors in the play-in game but they beat a depleted blazers team they lost by one to the suns they lost to the pels uh they lost to the thunder they beat the nets they lost to the celtics they lost to the knicks they beat a clippers team that was missing a bunch of guys they beat the jazz they lost to the mavs twice like in our mind like yeah visually like watching them play basketball they're probably playing better but like their records are not, not supporting our thesis. I mean, it's it is of, kind of a gauntlet. Yeah, yeah it is kind of a those gauntlet. are all like one and two seats, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it is what it is, I guess. But especially, especially when, especially when they've been missing so many bodies, like you know, that's a tough stretch down the way there because they, I mean, their rotation low key stops at Trey Lyles, right? Like they have like eight. Maybe nine NBA caliber players, right? Yeah, I mean, Alex Len made made some appearances, <laughs> but boy, oh boy, does he! I mean, he you, he just moves so slow on the court. Yeah. Like the, the, the there's just no urgency with Alex Len at all. Pour one out for playing Alex Lynn in uh, Phoenix Suns games three years ago. <laughs> Pour one out, baby. Oh, <laughs> uh, there should have been goat. Oh shit. Um, all right, we spent enough time on Tyler Hero in this tier, but I think it's a very important tier break. All right, Nez, what, what, what are we doing here? It's Vooch next, and then it's Discuss. I think that's how it is for the majority of the field, but what do you think? Um, I just need to double-check myself here. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've got Vooch over CJ, but depending on how this game works out, though, I think I – would probably take CJ over Vooch. Like that's one that I want to monitor. I don't want to be way mm -hmm. Vooch over, over CJ today. Um, okay. I know. I think that there's a wide range of outcomes for CJ. Like I mentioned. Um, okay. I have more CJ than Vooch. So, but, but I have them ranked Vooch over CJ, which is interesting. Um, if, if Ingram can, if Ingram can play and, like they, they 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 just I think Ingram is just super super important here. Unless like we see the Trey Murphy where he just like literally can't miss a goddamn jumper, um, then 
then, then maybe the, the, the Pelicans can can hang in this game. But CJ looked so bad last game, but he's so different when it's when Zion's on the floor. Like he just seeds everything to Zion. I did say that to, to Nick. That is a real <laughs> quote. <laughs> CJ without Zion is Michael Jordan. <laughs> I mean, just the, the the handling rule goes up so much when we talk about Point Zion, right? Like Point Zion, you take him off the floor, and all of a sudden CJ's handling rule gets boosted. Um, Jose Alvarado becomes kind of like a secondary guard. They don't go like the Zion at the five route and then let other guys have handling. It does it does make for a more traditional basketball rotation, does it not? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, as far as like. <laughs> not having the largest man on the floor handle the ball. Yeah, I'd say that yeah. that a, a traditional yeah. in that sense, no doubt. There you go. Uh, yeah. and, and we've seen CJ just crush without Zion. So, mm-hmm. yeah. It, okay. And it's the, yeah, I, I, I like him tonight. I like him tonight, but I do acknowledge that, like, the bottom could fall out on the on these Pelicans. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, this is the most important decision on the slate, in my estimation, this next little tier. If we buy into what we saw from Kobe White last game, it looks a little worse uh, now that Caruso is uh, claiming that he's going to play tonight. Uh, I would have preferred Kobe White with Caruso out just in terms of like handling and security of minutes. But that being said, I think he's still going to play like 38 plus here, uh, barring foul trouble. And he's not really that type. Uh, Kobe White versus Keegan Murray versus Brandon Ingram. Verse, even I will throw in Trey Murphy because if we think Ingram's role is diminished and he only plays like 24 minutes, 28 minutes, Trey Murphy is probably the biggest benefactor, um, in my opinion. So, yeah, I'll throw him into this kind of like grouping because I think those two kind of go hand in hand. Because if you're off Ingram tonight, you should be on Trey, and if you are, you know, or vice versa, right? So, uh, what are you doing with this next grouping? Uh, taking Brandon Ingram. Okay. Um, Ingram just, over Kobe White right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. For 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 sure for me and like fairly easily. I understand of the worries of like what we've seen from Brandon Ingram and everything, but uh, if miraculously he's playing thirty plus minutes tonight, um, which I I just don't think is that far fetched. Uh. That, then he's gonna then he's gonna be a fantastic play. He's gonna be an incredible play. So I'm at 37 percent Brandon Ingram, and uh, Keegan Murray is uh, is not far along. After I, I have a soft fade on Kobe White today. Okay, sounds good, man. I mean, I can't I can't talk you off that one. Um, yeah. So we're getting similar feedback in the chat here. Like if Bi is not truly healthy. Trey Murphy becomes, you know, that kind of guy. Nick kind of echoing the sediments, but saying the true ceiling game comes from B.I., so why take Trey over him? Just take B.I. and hope for that extreme outlier. Exactly. Ceiling. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm liking that. Uh, good nugget from Cross Dressing Life here that Keon Ellis adds a ton defensively while not sacrificing a ton offensively. That 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 kind of checks out for me. Um we're getting a bunch of perk mentions in the chat. A little drug balance stuff, but we've we've righted the ship. We're back here. Um, all right, Ness. So you went Keegan Murray, then you went Kobe White here, and then uh what are we doing here? Is it Trey Murphy sees on uh irregardless of BI? Like he's just gonna play a good enough role that he's now appropriately priced in this range for you. Is it IO? Is the Q tag um, you know, scary for the IO? Or do we go to, uh, as Blake's alluding to, Joe Val Day here, the Cooks Sabonis narrative, and not buying into what we saw with the Trey Lance minutes the last two games? Uh, I'm on uh, Trey Murphy here, like okay. very, like a pretty hard tier break <clears throat> for me here. Just we, even if Bi is doing is having like a monster game, Trey Murphy can still also have himself a really really good game. Um, yeah, he's he's a very vital piece of this offense uh, without without Zion and um, and and he has some stock upside as well. Um, in my yeah, opinion. that's the biggest thing. Both him and Herb Jones as like three and D guys, where it's like they don't need the ball in their hands to score points on our platform, and that's very viable in two game slates, right? Exactly. I mean, there's 
there, there, there's there's no reason to think if you play 32 minutes, 33 minutes, that they can't find their way to four or five stocks. And that could be a huge separator comparative to even like Jaime Hawkins, for instance, because the because you really need him to score. Yeah, exactly. Uh, as far as Herb goes, yep. uh, I've got a soft fade on Herb Jones. Chip does not. Maybe not. I think he, I think it's just a general statement from, from Chip. <laughs> just 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 making a declaration. Uh, yeah, I, I think yeah, like like Nick saying, Herb's got the defensive assignment. He's he's the Keegan Murray in a in a defensive spot tonight. Um, and, and I think that's going to be the the majority of his of his work. And he doesn't have enough of a role offensively, even without Zion, to to be like somebody that we should be like heavily prioritizing. But if he gives you thirty five in that range, that's a that's a good pick. So, cool. um, just not what I'm doing. So, are we pushing up? Uh, are we keeping Io here? Are we pushing up Joe Val? Or are we going the Keon Ellis? Or is it finally Jaime Hawkes season? I'm doing uh, Joe Val, yep. and I'm doing Jaime Hawkes both over Agreed. over this tier. So, I've got fifty percent Joe Val, fifty percent Jaime. Love it. Yep, that's yeah, I, you and I are in lockstep right there. Then I go Keon Ellis, then I go Ayo, and then I start thinking about Caruso versus Herb Jones. Mm-hmm. And okay. I think it's Caruso. Yeah, I kind of agree, man. I tend to agree. I'm like, going to be. I love Herb Jones. Herb Jones as well. I love yeah. Herb Jones as as a real life player, but for this slate, I just don't. I can't take him where he is, and you know, just trying reason with myself on it and just be and just telling myself that like you know this is a little bit of a of an edge that we don't have adp all we have are these site projections and this is maybe one of those spots where you know you just let somebody else take herb jones because he's at the top of their queue when in reality like he's not the pick cool yeah, no, absolutely. I feel uh, it's interesting that you bring that up, site projection versus whatever, because I feel very similarly about Javante Green because I think his value, though playing more recently, I do think his value is pretty tethered to whether or not IO plays, and I do think IO plays, which would make the projection on Green slightly high in my estimation. So I was kind of implementing a soft fade there and then pulling up some of these auxiliary um, components from the Miami game over this next grouping. Am I uh, speaking out of turn, Nez, or do you think that's fine? I mean, I don't know, man. I think Javante Green actually like has a place in the in the top 24. In the rotation? Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Um, yep. I mean, maybe not this high in, in, in our ranks, but like, I think that he's actually earned like rotation, rotational minutes. And, you know, I'm at, I'm at 20% Javante. It's higher than I thought it would be. So I definitely need to make a change to my ranks there, but okay. I, I, I think I'm letting my eyes, you know, maybe get in the way a little too much here just because like I saw him play and I'm like, man, he actually looks pretty good. Yeah. I mean, he's got uh he's got big Norm Powell shirt under his Jersey vibes, but outside of that, I can get on board. You love that. You love that about Norm Powell. I, I can pick and choose my spots. All right, Nez. <laughs> <laughs> it's the alley oop. I think the alley oop got me. Uh, he had a really oh, nice yeah. oop, and now I'm like, oh yeah, Javante Green. Damn. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know we could bounce out the gym like that. I didn't know. <laughs> With the bunnies, I had no idea. <laughs> so now, now, now I've got twenty percent, but that needs to change. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. There. Um. As you guys can see here, the, the I brought this up just to uh just show that Caruso just basically they shut it down at one point. This was the Drummond incident. And then it was just like, as soon as his ankle looked bad and he was putting the ice on it and he was stepping on it that, okay, we're done kind of thing. Yeah. That was so ridiculous. I mean, yeah. (laughs) Like, like can you even call the dude injury prone? Like it's just, it's just nuts. Yeah. Dude's a dog too. He plays through a lot of shit too. Like yeah. even all season. Yeah. Like just those little ones and stuff. Um, all right. So we got we got Io and Caruso beside each other. Uh, I'll throw in Herb Jones here. Uh, you've talked me into a little bit of green. What about uh the kind of like leftover Miami guys now, coupled with the Barnacle of the Bay and coupled with uh Nance and Jose Alvarado? 
who look like straight backups tonight. Um, what do you think of kind of like this next massive bunch? Kind of like Larry Nance. Okay. Just in know. the instance that they keep the minutes, what they have been opposed to what has worked for them versus the Kings in the past with Joe Val. Yeah. I mean, like it, it's probably sacrilegious to do Joe Valley and Nance as much as I have of like both of them, mm-hmm. but I think they both have a place in this game. Um, yeah. So I, I, if they, sp- uh, no. if they split the 24 down, down the middle, like why not? Right. I don't think they'll ever play alongside each other unless the Kings do something funky like Trey Lyles alongside Sabonis, which I don't think we've seen a ton of recently. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure we haven't seen a ton of it recently, even with them being kind of like down bodies. So it doesn't really feel like the spot. But um, that being said, like there's no reason it can't be like, you know, 2028 or 2424 down the middle at the center minutes there because they are going to play a more traditional five and we don't have to worry about Zion cutting into center minutes for the second rotation. Exactly. So I, 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 I like Nance tonight. I think that he, he makes sense. You can probably get some, some good minutes from him as opposed to like playing heat roulette back here. And as far as Alvarado goes, you mentioned him. Uh, I'm not, I don't really have a lot of Alvarado tonight. So, okay. Yep. Entirely fair. Sounds good to me there. Um, do we have a stand now? Let's 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 put uh, Javante there. Do you like auxiliary heat guys or do you like uh, Barnacle, the Bay Harrison Barnes next? I think I like Caleb Martin more than Barnes. OK, so you have a stand mentally that Caleb Martin is the best of the leftover Miami guys right now. We think he starts. We think he plays the most minutes. I mean, I hope. I've got 36%. Yeah. So okay. uh that that appears to be where I'm going right now. Uh it, it, it's so it, it's tough. I mean, this is this is this is a tough spot. And uh like one of these guys is gonna matter a lot, and um I'm not really sure who it is. Um right. like I kind of think Hayward the slate. I, Yeah, I kind of <laughs> like Highsmith. Okay. Why is that? Do you have a reasoning for it? I mean, he played a lot okay. with Jimmy in. You know, yep. like why would why would removing Jimmy from the equation all of a sudden take away from Haywood's minutes? I mean, he played the entire fourth quarter against the Sixers. I mean, yeah, he, so he, he, yeah, he came on um, at the six minute mark in the third, and then never left after that. Yeah, so I think nailing the closing rotation between him and Jovic is kind of like that's where the minutes are going to come from for the four spot, right? For the power forward role. If they go, if they don't play small to close and we're kind of making the decision here that high Smith's a better bet than I, cause I don't think he starts, you know, do you think he starts? Uh, so it'll be bam Martin. Yep. Hero. Hawk has. And then probably Jovic. And then Jovic, yeah. That's what they've been doing, and that's what I think. I expect that. It's just whether Jovic plays well enough to earn that next rotation to keep Highsmith on the bench longer, or they, yeah. Who's playing Who's who's playing point for them? Like ball handling? Yeah. Probably Hero. I think Hero will be like the majority handler, but I do think it brings in what Nick's saying here. And this has been my favorite six round click thus far is DeLon Wright. DeLon Wright is the more traditional of the ball handling, you know, distributing that sort of thing. Whereas like heroes pretty good. I mean, for like a super lazy, bad, awful comp, like off ball clay back in the day where it's like, he can just get shots and like, he can go to the hoop better than clay ever could. But like, you know what I mean? Where he's like, looking for that off ball pull up three stuff like a, a more versatile version of Duncan Robinson. You were talking about Delon, right? No, I was talking about a uh, hero in comparison to if Delon Wright comes on Delon Wright comes on to the floor as the primary handler. That's kind of like what I'm expecting is yeah. him to like 
have the ball a lot. I mean, I'm not like overweight, right? I have 16%. Um, and I've 34% high Smith. Um, okay. Again, I, agree I, I like, I like, here. right. I agree. I agree with Nick a lot here is they, they go, they see what Kobe did last game. Right. And then they go, what did DeLon Wright do for us last game in terms of the defensive end? And we've talked about the heat being a guard flow chart, but I mean, it's a little bit better with, with Terry not being on the floor, but if that Terry and hero was just going to be like, Oh, give us the guards on the other side. That's what we said the other day. Right. So it's right. kind of like, how do we how do we plug that hole on the defensive end? It's probably right. Yeah, uh, I think that I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah, man, it, it, it's really interesting. Uh, like, who's gonna do the ball handling for them? Yeah, because here's uh, T Bear brings up a good point here. Trent saying like, Kobe was playing against a checked out Trey, right? I mean. We're splitting hairs here, but like hero on the defensive end is how much better than Trey? Question mark. Uh, yeah, I'm not the I'm not the one to quantify that, but I don't think it's I think it's right. Similar. Yeah, well, we could bro science it. <laughs> like you know, it's like it's just yeah. Yeah, this is like this is the toughest thing, and I think I, I think the answer is you know I, I want to try to be as like spread out as possible, but. My Miami player pool is six players deep. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think you can stretch it further than that. You're including like all the starters, all the starters. And, uh, well, no, no Jovic for me. No Jovic. Okay. Interesting. So you think it's going to be one and done on the front end rotation and high Smith's the guy who closes. Yeah. Um I've got right. I've got Delon right. Um Yep. So that's your six. So no Kev Love and no Duncan Robinson for you? Mm-mm. Okay. I've been mixing them in, in in the last round here. Like I, I don't know they're... what the, like like what the hell was up with the Duncan Robinson thing? Like I'm just like I'm not I'm not trying to play that game. Yeah. It's fair. Yeah. One Okay, here let's This is one super super uh Gal brain, only John will get to this one. Is Duncan Robinson a free square ceiling shot? Because they stagger the basketball games. They play first. If he doesn't play a minute as coach's decision, again, we get a free swap to the second game. Uh. If, If the second game hasn't started yet. Big if. So if the first game goes to overtime, do they hold the second game to start? They're on separate networks tonight, Nez. One's on ESPN, one's on TNT. If the first game goes to overtime, do they hold the start of the second one so that we get a swap in time for a coach's DNP version of Duncan Robinson? Yeah, yeah, I think they're going to actually uh, hold the game so underdog can process the, the swaps. I think that's actually what what they're going to, what the call down is going to be. Um, I will we say. Get, we're like, going to swap to Jose Alvarado. Trey hey, Lyles. <laughs> I will say like, I am probably going to start taking a little bit of Duncan Robinson. I, I still got a lot of drafts left. I've got 62 drafts left. Mm-hmm. And like, it, it's different. It's a different situation than last game because Jimmy's not on the floor. So, you know, I think I need to to give Duncan Robinson a little bit more love. It's just so fucking weird that he didn't play last game. I can't get that out yeah, of my was. head whenever, like, earlier in the season, he was playing, like, 38 minutes, like, yeah. sometimes. Like, oh, it's, it's racking my brain, man. It is absolutely mm-hmm. racking my brain, and uh, if, maybe I need to start throwing him in. If Chicago gets off to, to a fast start, you know, if Chicago is up 10 at the first quarter, who is the best player you can pull off your bench to shoot you back into this game? It's Duncan Robinson. Yeah, I mean, he's he's like, yeah, it's him, him and Hero just like chucking up shots. 
Right. Or and Jaime Jaquez like bowling pinning his way into the into the lane yeah. and trying to get a turnaround jumper. Like Yeah. I mean, that's your path. Okay. Anyways, we've uh, we've wasted enough time on the the ins and outs of Duncan Robinson and whatnot. Let's rank these last kind of guys on the back end as we see it fit right now. Um I'm I'm Delon Wright, you're High Smith over Wright. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like the one decision there. And then what are we doing? Do you like Jose Alvarado with our 24th pick over Duncan Robinson? Is there any love whatsoever from my from my guy Andre Drummond playing 18 minutes and ripping 12 boards, something like that? Um Jovic starting, any any love there? Anything else you want to say? I think um it would be Duncan Robinson than Alvarado. Okay. I, I, I'm going to start drafting Duncan Robinson uh, after after this. I have none. I have none right now. So Okay. All right, let's hop in and see what happens. All right. Where are we going? Do we try to fill pick and roll? Maybe one after. Yeah, it only, only needs four or three, I guess, including. Oh, you. yeah. True. True, 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 true. It's easier. Yeah, that's interesting too. The Duncan what, Bam that? connection thing. Just working off one another. I mean, I didn't, was, know uh, there, I didn't know there was like a thing. There was a stat half halfway or you know, three quarters of the way through the year that I saw that was like dudes who've assisted the most on a, uh, a guys of, of uh, other teammates baskets and they were like one of those unlikely combos that was like fifth or sixth um (laughs) it was i'm trying to remember who it was because it was it was it was like um a really obvious one at the top maybe like fox sabonis or like something like this and then some of the other names on the list like really really caught you off guard that's funny i did not did not realize that. Well, Duncan Robinson draws a start tonight. I'm dead. <laughs> Here comes Fox. I, I think drawing a start would be like quite difficult, but I don't know. I agree. Just playing out the worst maybe, case scenario in my head. <laughs> maybe we should go back to uh, games in which Jimmy, you know, mixed. Missed back in the early parts of the season. Um, pretty standard run out thus far. Nez, we have Kobe White versus CJ McCollum versus Brandon Ingram decision right here. Which one do you prefer? Been doing Ingram, but uh, if you want to do a CJ, be my guest. Do CJ and see it. We'll stick true to our ranks that we just made. This would be interesting if he goes Keegan Murray or Kobe White there. Yeah. So people are doing the the you get Ingram in the third a lot, man. I have so much Ingram. It's so annoying. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take him here again. Mm. Man, yeah, it's I'm gonna I mean I got a ton I've got a ton in play right now, but um I I like my pick and roll team at least, so there's that. <laughs> Um, all right, Caleb Martin goes there. Hami Hawk is moving his way all the way up to 12. Io DeSumo at 13. Oh, we can go Pell's onslaught here with Joe Val, or we can do Keon Ellis, kind of like a game stacky thing. Uh, any other suggestions? Mm. No, one of those top three, I think. All right, let's do it. Let's do the Joe Val one. Joe Val starts at the five, he cooks Sabonis. Sabonis playing good D, though. Stepping yeah. it up, man. All right. Green, Caruso, Nance. Do something crazy with, like, DeLon Wright and that I stuff. think you just do Caruso. Okay. Caruso in the fifth feels fine. Like, if Caruso pushes up to, like, the third or something like that, I'll be completely out. But Caruso in the fifth, when you just 2v2 it like we did at the top of the show, it feels fine right now. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Oh man, this is. You don't like your exposures anymore? 
I'm glad we talked. Yeah, right? Like, it just gets the wheel spinning for different things, whether it's right or wrong. Ooh, ooh there we go. Andre Drummond at 21. Is there anyone in the sixth round who has a higher ceiling than Andre Drummond this evening? Yeah, I think you might technically be right. <laughs> um, Barnacle of the Bay, Harrison Barnes staring us in the face. DeLon Wright, potential increased handling role or the aforementioned your highest or one of your higher exposed high Smith, or we write our previous wrongs with Duncan Robinson. Nez pick done talking to Harrison Barnes. Yeah. <laughs> Harrison Barnes. There we go. Preamble for a five second buzzer beater. Got it, man. Got to do it. All right. Let's see how many we got in so far. We're at 21 now. All there right. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Let's rip one or more of those because they're really fast. Yeah, they go so um, quick. Yeah. I mean, that's another, like, I understand we have a big baseball slate today. We want to fill the playoff contest today that there's a lot of stuff on the platform that's going on today. The fact that these are four person drafts comparative to six, I think really helps fill rates. Does it not? Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, these things, yeah. these things go super, super quick. And if you look at uh, just the, the lock time, as opposed to like first tip, it's like so close. Cause these don't take that. Like the, usually it's like a 30 minute buffer. And this is mm -hmm. like 13 minutes till till actual lock. So I mean, these are gonna. I mean, this thing is almost filled, and it's one o'clock. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? Yeah, we got four more hours. So uh, I don't know that we're gonna get another one because we've got the Saturday one up, and that one locks at like 12 o'clock uh, Eastern. That's probably why you need yeah. people to be drafting Saturday as soon as this fills because it starts so early. Yeah, it is what it is. Always oh, knew he's ahead of the curve. He's got to figure it figured out. He knows this shit. He does. Um, all right. We got crutches in here. We got the curated in here. Friends and family. Red guy donkey 10. What a name. Love it. Um, let's do Fox again. Or is there any reason to do a little flipping of the board with Bam or DeRozan? I think you could do Bam if you wanted to. I'd rather not. <laughs> You think? Do, do you think the 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 Bam ceiling game is ever going to come? I mean, if it's going to happen, this is the time. Yeah, I think. No, no, Jimmy against the Bulls, do or die game. Mm -hmm. like if not now, then never. Right. Yeah. There's our guy hanging out. I I mean I don't think that the Heat win, but. I'll definitely take uh, take their coaching matchup. Okay, yeah, that's entirely fair. You don't think Heat win, eh? Yesterday, um, I looked up the playoff bracket on ESPN, and they had already penciled in the Pels and the Heat. They got the script, and as I was looking for the playoff bracket, as we did, They're, they the had the finals draft. already scripted out. Pels and Heat. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that, but they had them. They had them in for those eight seeds already, so... Oh, I better adjust I my ranks. Yeah, are you reading the script? Because I'm reading the script, bud. I mean, let's see. What's the... what? I don't even know what the what the spread is on that game. I think both games are one and a half. They're yeah, much tighter it, than I would have anticipated. I can't... The Heat are favored, man. Yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah, I mean, Chicago. Ooh, look, Keegan Murray pushed up to six. Our guy's getting creative out here. Pair a little uh, Vooch with Fox here. Absolutely. All right. Be interested to see what Crutch's autopilots do on the corner. He's got BI over Kobe White as well. Yeah. So there's something there. Um, I think Kobe White's a tear break here, though, for us. We just take him at 10. Him or Murphy, I, I I think you could I think you could do Murphy over <laughs> over Kobe, but interesting. I, I'll die on the Kobe over Trey unless Ingram's limited today. Hill. Fair enough. Yeah, I think the Kobe flow chart is just way better if he gets hero too. Yeah. But if
Like, I don't think, even if Trey Murphy, even if Ingram plays 20 minutes tonight, Trey Murphy plays 38 to 40. I don't think he has anywhere close to the ceiling that we saw from Kobe White last game. I mean, Trey Murphy, Kobe White put up like we, 70 points. That's my point. He's not, not going to do Ray, that again, though. Nobody's saying he will, but range of outcomes, he has that in his bag. Trey Murphy does not, period. Trey Murphy would need would need Wemby eight stocks and hit ten threes to do that. But Trey Murphy, here, here's the difference, he just, though. He Trey just doesn't Mur- have the ball enough. The, the difference, in my opinion, yeah. is that Trey Murphy, if – if we were to sim it out, I think Trey Murphy is going to outperform Kobe White, in my opinion. Just because in like of the 10, fact- 10,000 sims or something sure. like that. Right. Yeah. And and that's like that's the point for me. Yeah. That's fair. That means you should be you should be lower on Ingram, man. No, it means I should be fading Kobe White. That was the discussion. And I am fading All Kobe right. White. Okay. I don't think those two things are mutually exclusive because I think Trey Murphy's hinging upon Ingram more than you do, I guess. He's not a ball handler, man. He's a, he's a, he's a shot taker. That's true. That's true. That is true. Yeah. Um. All right. I took Joe Val while we were talking that one out. Mm-hmm. We can pair Nance with it here. We could do a third bull in green or we could do Caleb Martin. I've been doing Caleb Martin. Okay, I think with Joe Val, Joe Val and Nance on the same lineup, like that, that feels pretty bad. Okay, yeah, just like limiting ceiling, like handcuffing ourselves. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see here. I mean, last game, I don't think they're ever going to overlap, right? I mean, but when you take Zion off the floor, I don't know how much that changes things. Mm-hmm. I don't think they overlap at all tonight. I don't get like just what's the point of them using Joe Val the way they do. Like, do they just have him on the floor just to like do the jump ball? <laughs> like, I mean, the way in which they use Joe Val is eerily similar to the way in which the Heat use uh, Nikola Jovic. Jovic. I mean, the rotations are the exact same, right? Like, but like, what is the, what is the point? What's the point? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What am They're I turning, not, What am I not getting there? Like turning Yon, uh, t- turning Joe Val into Mason Plumley. Like, what's like the best case scenario with that? Like, what are they? I don't. I don't understand what they're trying to do. If if we could forecast two tweets from the underdog uh, NBA account right now. Oh, there goes Delon. Right there goes Green. Um, let's finish this one out. Hi Smith, Duncan Robinson anyone else it's one of those two let's do duncan robinson because we said we wanted to and we've kind of painted a narrative narrative here where kobe white and uh vucevic are the guys driving this team and we need uh some miami catch-up scoring courtesy of duncan robinson um okay what were we talking about and now i've forgotten we're talking about the joe val rotation and then, oh, the two tweets. We could forecast two tweets from the underdog account. Larry Nance is starting the second half for, for Jonas Valanciunas. That tweet could definitely come tonight. And Alex Caruso is headed to the locker room. Scheduled Ew. tweets. Scheduled tweets, man. Ooh, tomato. <laughs> oh, he's back on the bench. The back on the bench one comes comes eight minutes later. Don't worry. But they are scheduled tweets, man. Don't put that out there, man. We're gonna get forty-eight <laughs> minutes of of uh, Alex Caruso, and it's gonna be the it's gonna be the best thing ever. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I'll get you some good boys in the chat. The guy has decided to uh, to join us for for some baseball programming here. Um, ooh, Michael Wood saying he just got Bam at seven. Whoa, yes. wow. See you later, Numi. Numi's got yep. the, the, the got the cop emojis already working. Yeah, yeah. There's your Mr. Good that. Boys. Get him in there. 
Um, okay, I think this is a fun question to end. Uh, GM, GM, DFS, King. Um, this is a fun question from Eli here to ask. Where should Duncan go if we knew he was going to play? I mean, the sixth round. Interesting. Okay. I don't know. Like, what do you think? You think he's in the fifth? Like, if Duncan Robinson played 22 minutes tonight, I'd take him over Herb Jones. Spicy. Spicy marks, buddy. What? Can you, can <laughs> you handle those spiky, spicy marks? Let's let's go to baseball, man. I don't know what the hell you're on, dude. 22 minutes of Duncan <laughs> Robinson. Jesus Christ. Okay, too far, too far, too far. He's not I'll even walk like a that fantasy point per minute player. And you're like, give me 22 <laughs> minutes of Duncan Robinson and we're set. We're set, baby. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that takes us out. <laughs> oh, welcome to the program, Nick. Welcome to the program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Duncan Robinson would still be a six rounder. It would be like him versus versus Highsmith, still in that range. He would probably be ranked twenty first, twentieth. Yeah, like the CLV like that you, five six turn. Yeah, right. The CLV that you're getting on Duncan Robinson wouldn't be insane unless somehow they put him in the starting lineup or something like that. But I don't really see that happening <laughs> oh man all right let's talk a little baseball um two things i wanted to hit off the very top with baseball obviously uh check out nez uh but the weather today is really cold and the coors game is tricky to navigate and kevin roth our guy hashtag our guy for weather is actually on vacation this week. So everything that you get from Roto Grinders and whatnot that you're looking at is not as strong a resource as we're traditionally accustomed to. So just putting that caveat out there for everyone that our guy is gone for the week. That being said, the only weather spot is potentially Coors and it's cold and it's rainy and it's like 45 degrees. Everywhere on the slate is cold, other than Atlanta. Everything is like an abomination of 50 degree weather. Uh, yeah, that's, that's all I got on the weather front. Yeah. I mean, seems like it's something to just like not care about. Okay. In my opinion, uh, if yep. everybody's, if everybody's dealing with similar conditions, uh, I'm not adjusting anything major here other than like, like we kind of mentioned, this Rockies spot is not good. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think they either play or they don't. And I think we find out before the slate kicks off. So I'm still getting my fair share of drafts in with these team, with, with both of these teams. But okay. uh, I, I like other spots a lot as well. So the, the reason I say it, Nez, is I think today is one of those days where it's Fugazi Coors. And it is Atlanta's actually the best hitting spot on the slate. If you use, you know, weather edge outlier, blah, blah, blah. Atlanta is going to run out as a better hitting condition time and time again on a day like today, comparative between the two. Yeah. I mean, I have Braves, Yankees and Orioles ahead of the Mariners. There you go. Perfect. Great starting spot. Let's go to the Nez takes. As you can see, I'm all the way down at the bottom. Wow. Proving that I actually did fucking read the thing. <laughs> much, oh. much the popular <laughs> Um, All right. Favorite teams, as you alluded to, Braves, Yankees, Baltimore Orioles. Uh, you want to just talk about fun series for the weekend? How about the surging young um, Royals? And the surging young Baltimore Orioles playing one another uh, wouldn't be your traditional circle the calendar series, but low key feels like a fun one this weekend. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for it. This one in particular should be a lot of fun. Um, Royals get Dean Kramer, and uh, he's like nothing special. So uh, they they're definitely in consideration for me here. Uh, and then Alec Marsh for the Royals today. 
uh, against the Orioles. Those two team names are kind of like tough to to say. <laughs> to say succession back to back. there, yeah. yeah. But uh, Orioles today, top to bottom, just phenomenal, phenomenal spot for mm-hmm. them. Um, if, if, if it wasn't like Braves going against Heaney and the Yankees going against like the sneaky bad Rays, uh, I would probably have Orioles one, but these are two okay. really good spots ahead of them. Cool. Yeah. I like it. Um, actually while we're talking about, uh, cover boys and that sort of thing and Yankees is what brought this to mind here is you have Glaber Torres as your cover boy yeah. here. Check out this combined list because the combined homers between our two cover boys in Julio Rodriguez and Gleyber Torres is zero this season thus far. So we're really going out on a limb with the cover boys today, Ness. We are. We are. It's a long season, man. You can't you can't get tired. Like back in my day, back in my day, <laughs> back when I would play like ESPN fantasy baseball with like my work buddies, I would be like sorting by RBI uh, at this stage and like adding like whoever's at the top of that list from the free agents and like – you know, give me, give me early season Manny Margot over, you know, and, and I'm dropping like Justin Verlander in, in 2019 off to a bad start with the Tigers. Uh, you, you can't uh, like, yeah, this sucks, but you know, you, you got to stay the course. You got to just right. stay the course and uh, you know, I'll, I'll adjust when it's time to adjust, but I, I, I just found it funny because of some of the names on this list. Yes. It's still early, but like, man, there's a lot of names on this list that are, guys that I like or guys that we draft every day or guys that are always mixed in like that. Those, those Henry Davis and, and Brian Hayes stacks right now are killing us. This Wyatt Langford surge from uh, ADP 90 all the way up to ADP 30 at the end of dinger season. Like it's just aging so poorly right now. And I just found it humorous. Well, no Matt Walner on this list. <laughs> Uh, saving grace hold on okay i'm being told he's not on the 26 man roster at the moment oh Walder. uh oh, pour one out man it's all right did he back. actually did he get sent now oh yeah oh my yeah he yes. faced skeins yesterday no he did or, or a couple days ago or something our boys were our boys were going off two of my him. highest drafted players duking it out in triple a baby <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, all right, I'm gonna get give this a quick refresh. See if we have any lineups for the main slate thus far. Uh, Nationals are not on the main slate. Um, no, doesn't look like anything yet. Um, okay, cool. All right, Nez. Anything else you want to say? Uh, just kind of like macro landscape. Um, people can go through and and read this sort of stuff. But uh, you have Joe Ryan ranked as your highest pitcher over, even though his ADP is SP4, I think, the last time I checked. Yeah, I think so, which, like, it's fine by me, man. Uh, Joe, I mean, it's the Tigers right now are just really, really bad offensively. So two things going in Joe Ryan's favor. One, he has nasty stuff. And two, the Tigers don't really, unless they're playing, you know, the the Rangers and Jack Leiter, uh, yeah. they don't really have uh, – too too strong of a of an outcome there. So I like Joe Ryan. He feels really safe with the with a really high ceiling. Cool. Yeah, I like that. Um, those are our kind of like <laughs> slip slided everywhere. Facing the ball around. Actually, thank you. Look at this. Mr. Good boy is fully on brand right now. Oh, bringing baby. it over. Wow. Look at Clip the, the commercials. That one. That's awesome. <laughs> Dude's loving it. There you go, Bubs. Um, all right. Uh, Julian asking if he can interest us in a cheeky A stack. So this is where I was going with it next, Nez, is uh, those are the top stacks we got there. What are we thinking for Katrarian off the board, underdrafted 080p stacks? I mean... Tristan McKen, did you see the athletic story that came out? Uh, I didn't read it, but my understanding is Tristan McKenzie forego for for gone for go did did it uh um Tommy John surgery to pitch. Is this true? 
He faced Tommy John and decided against it. Did he make the right choice is the headline. Right. Um, yeah. He's still wondering if he made the right call. He insists that he feels no pain, but the shaky results have everyone wondering where this will lead. Um, he said, am I delaying the inevitable? Am I doing what's right for me? Am I not? I feel good right now, and I can't say I made the wrong decision. Um, he says if he feels Very... the, sl- the slightest twinge, he'll launch a self-investigation. Self-investigation? We're going to trust see? this guy? I mean, how can you – I mean, all this is all just like an all-time bad, bad news. And he gets drafted like every time, though. Um, or very close to every time still, just because he's facing the A's. I'm not taking Tristan McKenzie. Um, and you could definitely do some cheeky A's stuff, but okay, uh, not a huge part of my portfolio, obviously. Okay, that's fair. I mean, uh, yeah, maybe a little uh, G. Loft and and Seth Brown, something like that. JJ Blade. Put the lefties back in the order. They went primarily right-handed. Uh, I guess it was two days ago, not yesterday. I mean, maybe Noda's back in there. Shea Langlier's always uh, an ISO threat, always uh, a threat to leave the leave the yard there. Um, what are we thinking about, like, Texas and stuff like that against Sale? Good hitting conditions just in that game in general. Uh, no one's really getting to the Rangers, and everybody's getting to Sale. Is Sale all the way back and not a guy we want to target against oh no you could definitely take the take the rangers against against okay. chris sale um okay. yeah i i i haven't done a ton of drafts yet but every draft that i've done you know i have the rangers pretty high in my ranks but like i'm building on other teams and like i'm looking at like seager and Simeon in the sixth round like all day so mm. um i want to i want to get some rangers stuff in because sale looks good but He's he's still sitting with a four or five eighty RA, so he can get he can be got to. Yeah, I mean, like he's going to strike guys out, so his floor in terms of fantasy point scoring is like quite high, just right. because you know you know strike up inning kind of guy. But that being said, like he's also a guy who can get shelled every now and then. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna bring up some lineups, some interesting lineup notes. That are what at least what I find interesting here is um they have Evan Carter. Wow. Oh, it's lefty lefty. That's why. That's why. Um. Because Langford and and Carter kind of basically flip flopped in this one since yesterday. Uh, they have Orlando Arcia. This is the first time we're going to see the Braves hitting without uh, Ozzy Albies versus a left handed pitcher. And they, I'd like to see Michael Harris stay in that two hole. But Orlando Arcia has been going good, and not many people are drafting him, and probably going to be hitting in the second hole there. Um, Guardians, low key, one of my favorite stacks of the day. They rested a lot of guys yesterday on that short slate. Uh, there was no Quan in there. Fry hit second, and who was the other guy who wasn't in? Uh, whatever. Who gives? Oh, Naylor. I don't yesterday. think. Yeah, Naylor wasn't in. Yeah, it was kind of like a hodgepodge lineup yesterday. So we got a, a different one here. I like the lefties atop that order against Joe Boyle. Joe Boyle, a guy who with a really high walk rate, even at AAA right now, um, and you know, low key Guardians, one of the most disciplined bleed you to death with singles teams ever um maybe don't have the same ceiling as some other stacks like in terms of like home run pop but I, i'll be doing some threes and four mans of the guardians for sure today you already hit on o's and royals uh loki just not touching uh twins and tigers game outside of pitching looks like a great spot to pitch great part to pitch great temperature to pitch and two pitchers who are going decently well right now i won't even have one-offs from this game i don't think do you agree ness yeah i think you can maybe do like an onslaught here just to like you know just in case it really goes off and it's really one of those days but yeah this is a game i'm just pretty much crossing off outside of the pitching yep i i tend to agree with you uh there um this cardinals team is absolutely awful i have no (laughs) idea how or why um, Paul Goldschmidt, man, I, if you want to do like dudes who stick a fork are flirting with with done guys, Goldschmidt is getting there. He is getting to Jose Abreu levels of done. When we joked last year, what was it? Uh, 81 straight games without Jose Abreu having a home run 
last year, uh, and we just kept bringing that up, even though they were, you know, Dusty Baker was relentless at just putting him at the six hole every effing slate for whatever reason. Even when Chaz McCormick was cooking, he would just stick him in there every time. I'm starting to feel eerily similar about Paul Goldschmidt. I will not touch this. I will not touch the majority of this Cardinals team unless they are facing a lefty right now. Yeah, well said. Uh, no Goldschmidt and uh, n- like really nobody on on this Cardinals team for me against uh, Freddie Peralta. Not really looking looking to that, but uh, in, in future matchups though against righties, uh, definitely into Lars Newbar. He he's off okay. to a really hot start. Only six games, okay. twenty five plate appearances, but like. I mean, what he does seems seems pretty pretty legit, but otherwise, yeah, I'm I'm enjoying the demise of the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll direct your attention to the Brewers side for attention. Freddie Peralta as SP one for a reason today. Uh, just the strikeout rate. I've called him poor man Spencer Strider for a year and a half now, and uh, got no credit whatsoever, Nez, because I was probably wrong. But <laughs> but he's he's overachieved. <laughs> He's overachieved. <laughs> yeah, they're different. Um, they're different styles. Um, yeah, two pitch strikeout guys that were right handed and one threw hard. They both threw hard ish. <laughs> hard ish. Yeah. Um. Uh. This is a watered down Brewers lineup, but is there any love for Sal Freelich leading off on his birthday? Birthday narrative alert. Um. Any interest in the Brewers today, Ness versus professional pitcher Kyle Gibson? No, not really. But you can definitely. Do it. My man Sal Freelick is on a heater right now. So uh I mean Freelick Contreras Adamas, like sure. And like the Brewers are always gonna get love from from the computers. So it, it's it's just not a it's just not something that like I am prioritizing today. But okay. if I had enough time, I would make some room for the Brewers. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, some of those lefties that are going to go undrafted, like Freelick, Rake Bowers hitting in the middle of that. Yeah, I, I didn't know that Rake, a.k.a. Jake, turned his name back to Jacob. K-O-B. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, man, this guy's changed his names, uh, you know, more times than Robbie Anderson out here. <laughs> um, We touched on Coors. Uh, do you prefer either side of the Coors Do you prefer Mariners over Rockies? Do you prefer anyone in particular that no one's getting to? Uh, What do you think? I mean, I like all the Mariners if this game was to actually play, for sure. Okay. Um, Do you think it plays? No. Okay. Interesting. All right. But I'm still going to draft him. Because I I think I could could be wrong also. Right. Yeah. But you're leaning in the direction of it not playing as of right now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. Um, But... If it does play, the total is still ten and a half. And uh, you know, you look at this Mariners team; it's like, like is the offense really as bad as it's been? No, but it it you know Julio kind of second year in a row now as a quote unquote slow starter. So there's something there. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe Jorge Polanco wasn't the answer to hit third every single day. Mitch Hanniger is low-key off to a good start. Yeah. Um, JP Crawford low-key off to an okay start. Uh, Ty France going to driveline might not have helped, man. I don't know. He just doesn't have that same lift. He doesn't have – it's it's hard to have a corner – it's hard to have a corner infielder who is not a great defender in this day and age who hits under 20 home runs. I mean, I would say even under 30 home runs from a corner infielder in modern baseball, unless they're a plus plus defender at third base is really hard to get away with. And I think Ty France's time is slowly wearing thin. Yeah. He's, he's not it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Julian adding a little context here though. That his batted ball data is, uh, is looking a little bit better here. Plus, Three miles per hour bat speed, ninety percent hard hit. There you go. So maybe a little some of the underlying for him is going in in the correct direction there. Yeah. Oh, this is Coors Marine Layer. I didn't, the, we didn't even think about this one. Marine Layer narrative. Uh, GA with a little boots on the ground saying it's effing snowing in Minnesota. I think that would play well for pitching. 
Um, <clears throat> bad, gross pitching matchup between uh, the knuckleballer Matt Waldron and this Rodriguez guy who I didn't even really remember, and I was looking him up. Um, Yariel? Yariel? So I'm pretty sure, like, his deal is he was, like, international signing, like, just this, like, just coming into this season. Um, and mm, he was, okay. like, sought after. He played in the WBC. Um, I think he played for Cuba. And uh, oh. and he was nasty in, in the WBC. Dude, now I remember who he is. Now that you said, as soon as you said Cuba, I was like, boom, yeah, I got him. Yeah, I really wanted the Pirates to to sign him. Um mm. Yeah, he's got really good, really good strikeout stuff. I took a, uh, a higher on his on his K's in his first start. Um, yep. And yeah, man, he's he's really interesting uh, against the Padres today. I like him. I I I think okay. this is not somebody that I'm trying to stack against uh, today. So yeah, hopefully he can keep up the the good work. Okay, sweet. Good context. Thank you for that, Ness. That was uh, the sharp information in which I needed. <laughs> um, any love for, um, uh, I mean, not a great place to hit, but any love for the Blue Jays on the other side of the Matt Waldron matchup? Um, not really, man, but like the Blue Jays are so irritating because they're just like not somebody that you, like you can just like see them exploding like at some point they are going right. to have like a really really good game i don't think they're gonna have a really really good season but it's all gonna click at some point so you know you might as well just like give yourself one or two three to four man stacks a slate with with the blue jays but like i'm not gonna call my shot on them having a good game against waldron i think this is just a classic fall flat spot for toronto i mean if, if we were gonna run this if we we're gonna run best ball back today Mm -hmm. where's where's vladimir guerrero being drafted three four turn still ahead of nolan jones um <laughs> i uh well i think okay let me visualize i think trout moves up obviously i think seager moves up in that second round you know those guys were kind of around him adolis stays ahead of him riley green or um Austin, uh, why am I blanking on um, Austin Riley? Austin Riley stays ahead of him. Um, Gunnar Henderson or Vlad Guerrero. That would be the third, fourth round corner. Which one would you prefer? Gunner. The season? Like no, no question. Gunnar Henderson. Okay. No, no question for me. Lindor or Vlad Guerrero rest of the season? Vlad. Okay, so Lindor would slide a little bit down. Uh, Ellie or Vlad? Ellie. Wow. Okay. I love it. Come to the dark side, you sick fuck. Get over here. There's. I mean, I have a Vlad Pull fade, up a chair. But, but <laughs> Ellie, Ellie I've, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm. Ellie, Ellie, uh, Ellie hates over. Brian Reynolds or Vlad? Rest of the season. Vlad. Yeah, so he would be up in that same tier because of positional designation. I'm trying to think who else was at that three four term. Throw throw a throw a couple more out in the chat if you guys. I mean Simeon, them. Simeon or Vlad. Yeah, I think you just take Simeon. Simeon was going over Vlad sometimes, anyways, because right. they were on that left hand side of the board to begin with. Ozzy Albies with the injury or Vlad. I think Ozzy. Wow. Even if he misses like another four weeks or three weeks. Four weeks would be tough. Yeah. But uh, like, oh, here's big, a good one from Pete. Okay, go ahead. No, no, sorry. Go ahead. I mean, like the, the biggest thing for me is just like the, the, the lineup stinks. Vlad's mm -hmm. not having a bad season. I mean, he's only at a 118 WRC plus. You know that's going to improve, even though that's what he finished with in 2023. And everybody who's you know saying that it's gonna get better because obviously don't you know? But I mean he's walking a ton right now, which is like good. Um, yeah. But just like the slugging is just still not above five hundred, and it hasn't been above five hundred the past two seasons. Yeah. You're Vladimir Guerrero Jr. They killed him with that park, man. 
They killed him with that park. I'm going to die on that hill. I've been saying it since day one. Did you hear the Bo Bichette quotes about uh, batting average? Yeah, I think that's awesome. Like What's that, the most that, important that's... offensive stat? Batting average? Oh, the guy that the, the, the guy that the guy that the, the guy whose only skill set is is batting average thinks that batting average is important. <laughs> well, wow, no shit, <laughs> so good. Um, here's a good one from uh, Terrence uh, Ozuna or Vlad. Is Ozuna gonna hit 40 home runs? I'm again? trying not to say Marcelo Ozuna. I'm trying not to too, but is he gonna hit 40 home runs again? What's he at right now? Six, five, something like that. Like Jesus. tied for league lead. No, he's dude. He's at eight. Eight. Oh my god. <laughs> Marcelo Zuna. Do you want to hear these stats? Okay. Seven percent walk rate. Seventeen percent K rate. Obviously, that's going to go up a little bit, but seventeen percent K rate right now. That's very um, good for him. Three fifty two, four oh three, seven thirty two. Wow. <laughs> good for an 1132 OPS for a 205 is, is WRC plus. Dude, compare that OPS to like Otani and Betts. Like that's, I mean, like he's he's up there. Like Otani's wow. OPS right now is uh, nine or one ten forty for a 182 yeah, WRC plus, right and now. it doesn't even feel like Otani is like having a great season great. right now. That's fair. Yeah, it doesn't feel. <laughs> you know, like that. that's that's wild. It's been overshadowed by the fact that Mookie Betts has been so good. Um, yeah, okay, last one here. Him. Julian asking, uh, Royce obviously still injured. O'Neal Cruz versus Vlad. I think I still take the Vlad side of that one. That's Vlad. Yeah, that's yeah. Vlad. I need I need O'Neal Cruz to figure it out. So Simple resurrection side. contest drops tomorrow. Vlad's ADP is what? 31. Okay. So you still think he's a fringe front end third rounder, but we just think some of those other guys now move over him. So Gunner moves up enough to go over him. Ellie moves up enough to go. Yeah, Maybe over actually him. worse than that. Maybe like 39. I, I think three, four turn. I think that's okay. like, I think three, four turn is where he gets where he would go. Yeah. I was going to say, I was going to say uh 38 and a half. That was going to be like my number instantly. He yeah. falls to that right hand side of the board where Lindor was going in the dinger because everybody's just like, well, I mean, you just, you can't let Lindor fall farther than this. Can you? And then yeah. just fucking clicked his name like dogs. Um, yeah, I said it. Um, okay. Last two games on the slate here. Sean Anaya hasn't been what we wanted him uh, to be when people got excited about him cutting his hair and being a late round pick. Um, any interest there and any interest uh, stacking against Yamamoto today, who looks all the bit of the fourth round, third and fourth round pick that he uh, that he was. I mean, him in class now looks stupid good. Yeah, I mean, Manaya's only had three starts and only one of them was bad. OK. Um, the the Dodgers are the bad Dodgers, one. though. <laughs> yeah, I was like, he's about to have another bad one here. Probably, probably, but yep. I don't know. I'm not clamoring to get to get to the Dodgers today. So fair enough. Uh, I, and, and I like and I like the Mets as a sneaky stack against uh, Yoshi. Cheeky Nez, cheeky. They came alive. Um, what was it? I think they've won two series in a row, and they came alive with like nine runs the other night. So this no, lineup, I, I don't at, think that, I don't think point, they played. I don't think they. I don't think they played the last four days. Oh yeah, yeah. No, they didn't. I, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about there. I don't think you're right. Those were those were scheduled off days for yeah. the entire league. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't recall what you're what you're speaking of there. Uh, oh, no, man. but they are hot. They are hot. They just swept the Pirates, and they were the Pirates were leading in every one of those games. Uh, wow. And uh, and got swept. But Yamamoto, you know, he's. Had two good starts after that Padres, you know, breakdown disaster. Um, yep. And then face the Padres again. And the Padres kind of got to him once again. Um, chased him out in five innings. He has yet to go six. Uh, yeah, man, I'm not, I, I, I'm not, I'm not so certain that he's like dominant. Okay. Like Yamamoto. Entirely fair. Entirely fair. Um, Julian adding some good context here that Manaya's bad start was because Starling Marte dropped mm. a 
catchable fly ball and didn't get credited for an air. Very true. good context from our guy, Julian. Thank you for that. Um, last game of the night, Nez, uh, in a park that mitigates the effects of wind in San Francisco, we get the Scott Boris Bowl, a.k.a. the two late signees going up against one another, the left-handed phenom, two-time Cy Young winner who, according to Baseball is Dead, I was listening to yesterday, shout out Underdog Podcast Network. I don't, I don't even know if that's a thing, but it should be. And I just made it. Um, <laughs> the family of underdog podcasts. Uh, Blake Snell, two Cy Youngs, has never had a complete game before. Kind of crazy, huh? That is crazy, but like who's n- – nobody is surprised by that statistic, right? Right. Yeah, that's fair. Nobody who knows ball is surprised by that, but it's it's interesting to note. It is very interesting to note. Uh, yeah. I like both these guys tonight. Ooh, interesting. I'm on the other side of the fence, I think. Give well, me your take. Well, I mean, give me your take. I mean, the, the, the run total speaks for itself. It's seven and a half run total. Um, I mean, like what we know about these pitchers is that they are good. Yeah. You know, like, I guess if you don't think that like Blake Snell is yet like up to form. Okay. Uh, and Gumby's had, you know, multiple rehab starts uh, in, in triple a leading up to this. This isn't his first time picking up a baseball. Um, right. You know, I, I like both these guys tonight. The, the, the pitching slate is so deep that you don't need to prioritize pitching early, really. Um, okay. So, and, and I'm totally fine with Gumby as a fallback option. Like he could find himself like pitching into the sixth at like a 65 pitch count, you know, like he doesn't, the K's are never going to be there for him, but and the Giants don't really strike out that much, but he can just like pitch the contact his way into like seven innings if if the pitch count stays low. Very interesting. Okay, cool. Um, my take was completely different. Like just the fact that we hadn't seen Snell go more than four innings yet, and the fact that they were working Jordan Montgomery back and probably wouldn't push him heavy in his first start. I didn't know the AAA context. So thank you for the fact that he's he might be ready to be stretched out and whatever. He's not a high high velo guy either, so he he is kind of like yeah. the archetype of professional pitcher who can step in and throw five in his first outing. I was going to pose you the question that I heard on Baseball is Dead from this same thing. Our guys over there suggested higher lower on total innings pitched for, between these two tonight. Um. Ten and a half, I think. Would, wow. if, I, if I was a if I was a lot if I was a uh, projection maker, um, wow, I that's would, high. I would say ten and a half. You think? Yeah, it's high. They oh, said seven on. and a half. Oh, I that's ridiculous, seven. dude. What do they think I Jordan think... Montgomery does on the mound? He's not working counts. He, he, he hit yeah. it. He's, he's just grooving <laughs> it. Hit it. Okay, so counter to this from a fantasy relevant standpoint. If we think Jordan Montgomery pitches five innings tonight, we should be loading up on Smoston Slater and Wilmer Flores. Because if you give me three at-bats versus Jordan Montgomery from those two lefty killers at the top of the lineup, one of them's going yard, maybe both of them. In San Francisco? Like Wilmer almost hit 30 in San Francisco last year. I mean, I guess, man. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, 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 I want. I don't want either offense in the, in this game. Okay, fair enough. You've forgotten your uh, your diamond after dark uh, roots here, Nez. Of of us getting uh, of us getting to uh, to underprice San Francisco bats when they're not going to platoon. But I like Gumby, man. I like Montgomery, so I can't. Yeah, I can't true. today. I'm that's excited my, to see what guy. he looks like. Yeah, uh, G-Strat saying Snell has to show up Logan Webb from last night. Logan Webb pitched very well last night. I think he only gave Ever up green. two hits. Yeah, seven innings, um, only two hits. Um, He's the yeah. man. He is the man, dude. He is just beacon of health, to knock on wood. But um, I wanted to share my one last pitching uh, thing with you today. 
and then we'll rip a draft here. I'll do it as we jump in a draft. Oh my god, I'm guys, I had it ready too, and I'm just too stupid. This is riveting radio. Okay, let's jump in a draft and okay. then I'll read you this one, Ness. Yeah, Julian's right. You're speaking on Montgomery like it's Andrew Heaney on the on the on the bump here. This is <laughs> like, it could be <laughs> Gumby and Gumby and San Francisco, man. He's his earned like let, let's look at let's look at the underdog fantasy pick'em lobby here and and see uh-huh. what they've got listed for Jordan Montgomery. <clears throat> All right. Our guy Don rolling through here says he's new to the DFS streets. He needs to know which outfielder he should have today. I mean, outside of the big boys of, you know, Judge Acuna and uh, th- those guys today, Nez, who's a, who's a guy that's a little bit further down the list that isn't as obvious that you would want to be getting to today? Uh, Colton Kowser and Cedric mm. Mullins. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like that. I would throw out um, Teoscar Hernandez today too versus lefty. I like Tay Oscar. I like Hanniger. We don't yeah, have like any it. innings for Jordan Montgomery in the pick'em lobby, but we've got an earned run higher lower of two and a half with um a spicy higher on the two and a half earned runs allowed. I would I might just go ahead and put something together right now where I take a lower on that. Okay. Sounds good. Star Tours in the draft with us. <laughs> Allow me to punt. Love it. Punt away, my friend. Permission yeah, we grant you permission to punt in said draft. Um, JPB in here. All right, Nez, I got my stat for you. Last season, lowest strikeout percentage amongst qualified starters. All right. Actually, this is not. That's not true. Qualified pitchers. All of pitchers, okay? okay? There was 172 qualifiers last year with a minimum of 80 innings. The lowest strikeout rate in all of baseball last year was 11.4% from uh, Adam Wainwright. Four of the next five are all on the same starting rotation. They are. Who are they? The Pirates. Mookie Betts? Uh, yeah. Are Julio they on, Rodriguez? Are they on the uh, the Rockies? They are all on the Rockies. So it's that, like, is Dakota Hudson one of them, or is he actually a, a, not one? Dakota Hudson is the second lowest strikeout rate in all of baseball behind Adam Wainwright last year. Then Cal Quantrill, then Kyle Freeland, then Noah Syndergaard, which I found kind of interesting, and then Austin Gomber. Checks out. So you... So you have a park where contact is king. Contact just opens up the entirety of that yard because much to people's chagrin, that place is not, it's not a band box, right? It's not a place you hit it out. It's a place where contact plays because the outfield is so large, right? Mm -hmm. And you build your pitching staff to be contact pitchers. I mean, I, I don't even think that they know what they're doing when they build their pitching staff, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stack Otani with bets because it seems kind of rare and something that doesn't happen every draft. Wow. GMGM. GM. Oh, GMGM GM to you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you going to do Freeman? Freeman is having the quietest 120 WRC plus season ever. Dude, it's crazy, man. Like, hit, like he, he, he doesn't he just feel like that dude always? Like he just Kinda. feels like he just quietly gets it done. Just um, like is seven, on... eight, nine fantasy points, and never like double digits, never yeah. like breaking slates. Yeah. Yeah. Um, has he homered yet? He must have. He's he's homered once. Uh I'm gonna say no. But maybe once. Yeah. He has one home run. One home run, yeah. And it was, was it the CL series? Yeah. Oh, no. It was against the Cardinals. Uh, 
Yeah, it was. I, I remember it actually. I think it was Sunday night baseball, or it might have been the Saturday night. Oh, we got a lineup here. Orlando Arcia in the in the two hole. Hello. Yes, I never. You're right, GA. I never school. Actually, yesterday when we did um, the hockey draft, Nez, I got a full Edmonton stack from the front end, and Sam Olson said he hadn't seen it yet. So the Edmonton nobody spoilers. Runs, nobody runs better. That's not what you want, man. <laughs> oh, it was on opening day. There we go. That's why it was memorable. Uh, yes. Yeah. Huh? Nolan plus cash for Brian should tell you all all what we need to know about the Rockies. <laughs> Chris Bryant, man, has had the biggest fall off of maybe any baseball player ever. Like, I don't know. It's crazy. The Rockies Sad. just like you don't it's, it's, you don't give a, yeah you don't give Aaron Nolan Arenado the bag and then you bring in Chris Bryant give him the bag and the skill set ages even more poorly. <laughs> I mean, it, it just I, I would just love to know like what goes on there, right? Like, do you guys have an analytics department or do you just kind of fucking guess? <laughs> like. I mean, I don't have the answers, but like, how are they not like pouring in so many resources into figuring out what type of like pitcher does well at the mm-hmm. at, at course field? And why don't they start with actual like quality pitchers first? Yeah, that's fair. Um, should we do something funky like Mullins and Kowser, or should we play Freeman as the stack, or should we put Matt Olson, who's my favorite hitter available, on here? Do Olson. We might get Freeman to come back to us. Jay Witz is doing his stacky McStack thing. He, we could do Olsen. No, no, we could do Olsen as a as a one off. Pretty fine doing Olsen as a one off. Yeah, you could do the RCF thing. Lefty, but he's really good and Heaney is not, so. Um, Mullins, O'Hearn there. O'Hearn's been a, a little hot in recent memory here dude i love ryan o'hearn today all right uh freeman comes back to us do we do freeman and then find an outfielder later I think you have to okay this is this is kind of nutty yes yeah, it's kind of a of the gmgm GM variety thus far yeah you can if you you know roll the dice and get into these rooms where people are you know trying to fill out their um you know contrarian stacks yeah then you can put together a monster monster team it's the give and take it's the you know it's the give and take of these you know these games we talked about it all the time like what you know what you're you're not just building out your own stuff in these games when you decide to go off the rails you're also giving up you know certain combinations that are not typically there but like you just have to live with it yep for sure here um yeah, Owen's saying the opposite of what we were saying here um, with McKenzie versus Oakland could be fire. I mean, it, it could also blow right up there because he might be hurt as hell right now. So that one, that one's interesting. Um, yeah. Chipsy's saying the Will Brennan for Nolan Jones, even if he sucks, it's fine. So they, they made one good trade, so the organization is fully back. <laughs> fully, fully back. All the way back. People, uh, sharp players still in here loading up on cores. Yeah. Double Mariners from JPB. We got double Mariners from Jay Witts. I mean, all the, if you're using projections or anything, they're all going to tell you to, to play that game. Yeah. No, no uh, should we, should we tack on a one-off Nolan Jones? Should we tack on Tay Oscar as a stack here or someone else you would like? Dude, I think you just, I don't know, man. It's hard not to do Tay Oscar. Okay. We could do Tay Oscar. We could do Duvall, too, and make it a 3-2. Duvall versus a lefty is always fun, too. It is. Mix him in a little bit. Um, But we do a 4-1 there with Matt Olson in the middle. Do not dupe us, bros. Pop out the uh, the draft board, if you would, please, so we can look at this once it's once it's over. Yeah, sure. Um, I got it. Cool. 
Um, all right, we're gonna have to decide on our SP here. Chris Sales staring us in the face. Mackenzie, I'm not touching because I think he's hurt. Um, Clark Schmidt, not terrible today, but probably not for me. Uh, Jack Flaherty, and then yeah, kind of a bunch of dust after that. Um, just feels like Sale here, huh? Sale or Flaherty? A sale. Yeah. Feels like the strikeout floor is highest, even though uh, I'll look at my trusty sheet right now, looking up at Texas. Texas tw team percentage of strikeouts, about neutral, 22%, depending the lineup that they roll out. So, I mean, seems fine. Probably strike out a little higher than that against a guy like Sale. Yeah, I would, um, I would think so. Uh, their lineup isn't like super. It, it's a good top three, top four there with with Wyatt included. But um, yeah, I think you can take Sale and feel feel good about the floor. Yeah, cool, like it. Uh, gonna jump back into this one. Star Tours asking if his draft is ass or not. He went with Judge, Bobby Witt Jr., Fernando Tatis Jr., Vinny P., Glaber Torres. Checks out to me and arguably the best pitcher on the slate as well. Um, looks pretty good to me, man. 2-2-1 two, two, with a good pitcher. I like it. I like it. Did, did the Yankees thing. I really like that. Uh, good stuff. Yeah, looks, uh, looks really nice to me. And then going like the Glaber route with Judge instead of doing – you know, a lot of them are going to be paired with uh, Volpe or Stanton, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, sorry, or Soto, rather. So, you know, doing that and then Tatis as a one-off feels good. And yeah. Vinny P, bit of a scroll variety too. Yeah, I like it, man. I, I think you did a good job there. Not ass at all. Not ass. Um, you fade Joe Ryan. Any pitcher to look at? We talked through the pitcher. Nez has his pitcher ranks. Uh, on neztakes.com so scroll back on that bad boy and there'll be tons of stuff there and is baltimore stack today yeah baltimore is our third favorite rank stack is that correct Nez? third uh yes uh third or second uh top three regardless so yeah go ahead and stack them they're good sounds good uh nez you got one time for one more to appease the scroll community where we can um uh, do something I, funky i need to get some lunch man we're All right. They'll, they'll pass Let my lunch time. My, my stomach is <laughs> destroying itself at the moment. Let it be known that Nez is the reason we didn't scroll the F down in a baseball draft today. Um, do us a favor, guys. Hit that thumb. Hit that like. Hit that sub before you leave. Don, just hit the sub because he's a good man. Appreciate you. Um, anybody else want to uh, do the same? Please and thank you. Uh, apart from that, we got uh, Zambonis to fill. We got dances to fill, and then we got a sweet NBA. Um, we got a sweet NBA slate that's still up there, and then we'll be drafting baseball the remainder of the day here. So best of luck in all those contests to everyone over the course of the weekend, and then we will talk a little football. NFL Draft Week is next week. We got Hayden Winks joining us on Monday to kick it all off. That's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah going to be great stuff get us ready for the draft good luck to everybody enjoy the weekend here uh alex is i don't know it's somewhere around here there's a join button there's a sub button maybe nez has the link to the join one we'll drop it in the chat for you, you yeah that one, stick nez? around i'll uh, drop it in the comments all right Hilly will drop it in the comments for you guys on behalf of nez myself yeah that's all i got man yeah see you in the lobbies the yeah, various lobbies playing, that are available to us today. Yeah. Of which there are many. On, yeah. If you're not playing on underdog fantasy, hundred percent match deposit up to 100 USD using the promo code MLB at sign up on behalf of Nez myself. We are the badge bros. And this is everybody's favorite time of the show. The end. Peace.